Hey guys, let's talk about two things quickly uh, today. Number one, why the uh, police have not intentionally, but ended up shortening the responsibility responsibility to the public, and in doing so, lost credibility. No, just lost not only credibility but the ability to police. And of course, when that happens, the military gains more prominence because you know, it's, although the police are supposed to be the experts at a local level, if they fail, the backup will be the military, the other unit with guns and crowd control. The second thing is, well, I'm trying to think of how to characterize this, the second issue. So while I'm doing that, let's maybe just try to cover, let's try to cover the first one. So in a normal situation, especially in a successful country where the banking system is loaning money based on asset values, primarily housing values. In other words, you have a whole system that's designed to attach people to their communities based on a home purchase. And as a result of that presumed commun communal attachment, the banking system allies itself with the government in order to loan a lot of money, money that would otherwise be unavailable in most countries for the purchase of a home. And then the government in alliance with the banking sector, the private sector, builds an, ent an entire economy around the idea of housing and around the idea of housing inflation. In other words, housing prices going up. And the governments do this because they get a cut, property taxes, and of course the banking system gets interest. But what people don't realize is that the banking system is really making money, not necessarily on the interest, it's making money because it now can tie loans to a specific asset value, or I should say a presumed asset value. The joke is that, you know, you know the debt on your books is certain, but asset values are always speculative, as the United States found out in 2008, 2009, with the housing crisis, which was really a banking crisis, and, a de and therefore a debt crisis. And this, it wasn't as if it was completely <laughs> unpredictable. We have a student loan crisis as well, uh, about one to two trillion dollars in student loan debt. We have, we, we sort of have a consumer credit, credit issue as well, but we have a, a stop gap. We have an escape valve under the bankruptcy code. So I, I, I wouldn't be too worried about the credit card debt overall, uh, because again, there's always that escape gap. <sighs> now, and of course, most credit card companies, they're really, they're really technology companies. Uh, so they're not really holding anybody's money. Uh, they're simply, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not a bank. They're affiliated with a banking system, but they're really designed to be technology companies that seamlessly transfer money and gather debt. And so the whole idea has been that when you can tie people down to a community, you can actually get a lot of data. You can try to figure out what makes them happy. You can try to advertise to them. And eventually each community especially within a country that has a multi-layered government system where the local government can go farther in lawmaking and therefore culture creation than the national government. The idea in those systems is ultimately that the police will be able to protect a community that they're familiar with under laws passed by the city council that they lobby for or, 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 or at least kept in the loop by the mayor. And that's again in theory. But what's really happened over time, as we talked about, you know, like I said, the debt crisis, is that capital has always been fluid. Capital wants to be mobile. And capital is like the most beautiful woman in the world. It can go anywhere it wants. No one's gonna hassle it. And Overall, of course, the question is whether or not there's substance behind that capital. But we won't, we won't, we don't, we don't want to torture the analogy. But so capital is mobile, but labor is not. That's been 
quite frankly, from an economic standpoint, the primary lesson of economics or throughout human history. And as a result, when the debt gets out of control, you have a lot of problems. The military again gets called in because the police have failed. They failed to create a situation where they know their community. And one of the reasons they've, they fail is because the overall community is no longer, it's so fluid that, it, that it's almost impossible to create a consistent character even within, even on a local level. So again, you can think about the idea in the old days of a police officer that didn't have, you know, a military uniform or, or something similar to a SWAT team body armor walking down the street with a nightstick and, possibly, and, and a gun, but otherwise unprotected. And that's the image people have when they think about police officers. That's the image people have when they want to be police officers. And the reason for that is that the whole idea is that that police officer knows his or her district and therefore is in a position more than anybody else to police. In, order, in other words, to serve as a glue between the community and, well, government representatives, businesses, everybody. Because if you think about it, you know, I'm, I'm in a somewhat large city in California. It took me a long time to figure out, you know, just to go on the other side of town, the east side of town, which is highly segregated uh, ethnically, but it also has the best ethnic food, which is why I ended up going there. And, you know, if you think about it, you, you, have, a, you have some issues in terms of this model that is now outdated because people are moving in and out. People are able to move in and out. They're able to own multiple homes they don't live in. And ultimately what happens is that the police are overwhelmed by capital. And the labor, you know, starts to lose power. And a lot of people who, are, who call themselves progressives, they focus on that side of it. They focus on the latter side of it, where the labor loses power and it all falls apart. They don't really focus on the front end of it, where they understand why capital exists. In other words, and they understand the upsides and the downsides. Because again, without capital, nobody moves in. You don't have diversity. The capital needs to bring with it labor. That's where you get immigration. You know, it's not as if it's not a coincidence the countries with the strongest banking sectors also have the most immigration. They're trying to arbitrage labor costs using the strength of their banking system in order to impress upon their communities a higher standard of living for the existing residents in exchange for the promise of a higher quality of life for the immigrant's children, but not necessarily the immigrant. That's been the deal, a long-term deal that we've created. We, the citizens who are, are, who are already here, have created the status quo that you want to be a part of. And, you know, it's a long-term deal. It should be a long-term deal, which then makes you realize why lawyers and the legal system and the judicial system are so important in enforcing this glue between the police, the community, and everyone else. And, of course, the government representatives. So what's really happened with respect to the police is that they've lost credibility because they've been overwhelmed by capital and everything else. And the lawyers, rather than create a glue between or strengthen the glue between police departments and the community using various marketing programs and various community outreach programs, what's really happened is the other way around. The people, the police have essentially used the lawyers to prevent themselves from accountability and transparency. In some cases, that's a good thing. It's because a lot of people don't really understand how the economy works. They don't understand how large the informal economy is. And if you wanted the police to start enforcing all the laws, a lot of people, a lot of good people would be out of work. And a lot of businesses would also be out of work. So that's really my point. Uh, would also be out of um, business. Would also just not be able to survive, is what I mean. Now, so what's the point of all this with the police side? The point of all this is that over time, as the old model has become outdated, over time, what's happened is that the police no longer respond to individuals within that community that they're supposed to police. What they do instead is they respond to known taxpayers, typically businesses and real estate owners. So in other words, they end up protecting property and real estate and businesses instead of the individual. That's really the story of American policing 
over the last 20 to 30 years as the federal government and local police departments have had their cultures, in a sense, intertwined. Increasingly so uh, because of the way that police departments are funded. And of course, police departments cannot run deficits. Uh, you know, so even in most cities, police departments take up about 50%, sometimes more, of the entire city budget. So you can see how that's, that could fluctuate. You can see how that could make the community essentially a reflection of how honest that, that, and how effective that community's police officers are. You can also see how the culture can be destroyed in just 20 years to the extent that that relationship is not managed properly. In other words, it's overwhelmed by some external factor, whether it's, you know, debt or whether it's the inclusion of an external funding mechanism, in this case from the federal government, which has a printing press and therefore it can print as much money as it wants in order to maintain the status quo. The incoming, the new president, of course, has a trillion dollar stimulus plan from what, last time I checked. The main component the media is focusing on is an additional $1,400 in what are called individual stimulus payments. Well, the reality is that's on top of the, the trillions of dollars, or sorry, the billions of dollars, um, perhaps hundreds of billions of dollars, but most likely tens of billions of dollars that have gone to businesses, especially religious entities like the Catholic Church, which received a special exemption from the uh, what are called PPP, PPP loans, uh, that were supposed to help small businesses. But of course, once you have that exemption, suddenly you see, well, again, you go back to that idea of the community being no longer the individual, but real estate owners and property owners, because that's who the police recognize as their, as their community, as the people funding them. In other words, you've got the debt replacing the individual taxpayer. And as a result, within that legal mechanism where local governments are bound to have balanced budgets, you suddenly have it's the destruction of community. And that's essentially what's happened. So let's see, I'm 12 minutes in. I had another uh, topic I, I wanted to discuss, but you know, this is, this is good enough for now.